Hello everybody and welcome to part two of the Eerie Tales mini album. This is featuring the paper collection Eerie Tales from Graphic 45. It was their 2014 Halloween collection. So right now we are doing pages two through five of the album. So this is quite speedy. Now I actually did this page, which is the first half of page two, before I decorated page one. It is not necessary. I'm not really sure why I, why I did that. So you're going to use the standard um, pocket that I showed you before, and that is in the templates. And basically you just take those um, pockets and fold down the half inch scored parts. We're going to use two of those and in this one also I used the squares that matched and not the um, flaps that match. So either way it works. Um, it's probably less paper and less hassle if you just use the four and three quarter by four inch squares to finish off these pockets. And the nice thing about the other ones would be is that it would give you, if you use the the flaps instead of those squares to finish off these pockets, it would actually give you a little bit of a, a backing to where your tag goes. So but as you can see, you just uh, stick the square on there and it, that produces your pocket. The third line uh, where that where you can see that score tape now is going to be your flat part and when you do it this way you want to add that glue so that your tags don't fall out the other side so we'll do two of those exactly the same and my apologies if you can hear me breathing but my allergies and my asthma are like crazy right now so spring is in the air <laughs> Uh, my allergies were actually worse this year, um, right before it started getting warm again because of the leaves that were still on the ground and had been sitting under snow and then we got a bunch of rain. It's absolutely insane, but my allergies are crazy. If I wait till I can breathe properly, I probably would never get a video done. So now you can see that I am gluing these pockets down on the side of the album opposite. Let me make sure I tell you right. It's the side of the album where the hinge goes. So opposite the opening for the large tab, that's where you're going to put these full flat pockets. So essentially the way you're looking at it right now is the way that it's going to go in the book. That is going to be the right hand side is going to be on your hinge. Now I'm taking that four by eight flap and two more of these pockets. And they're gonna go on the opposite side, which is the side uh, furthest away from the hinge and next to the uh, large tab pocket on the side. And then I'm gonna take the small pockets and just glue all three sides down to the four by eight flap and make a bottom pocket on both sides. Now I just checked to make sure that the flap was on the left hand side so that I didn't put my pocket on upside down. Now you see me tap the outside edge of that and it's just saying that make sure that if your pocket is a little large that you kind of scoot it out 
towards the outside edge and not towards the flap. If the pocket interferes with the flap, it won't close properly. Okay, so once we get this flap on there, it's going to be complete and ready to decorate. And these, you want to put the flaps on before you put the paper on the back because if not, you'll see the uh, you'll see the flaps. Okay, so now I do have the opposite side decorated, and this is where we end it off here. And I'm going to put a nice big eight by eight green paper there. And uh, that's going to stay there. I'm not going to cover that up at all. It's going to be a nice spot for a photo or several photos. Now I have this from the cut apart sheet. It's a three by four cut apart. And when I did my fussy cutting, I didn't have any green frames. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking my X-Acto knife and my Tim Holtz ruler, the metal side, and cutting that frame out. Now, it's a pretty small frame and it broke when I cut it. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. First, I'm gonna go along the outside edge with a black marker. And that's just going to make it so you can't see that white edge, which if we were doing a white album, that would be fine, but we're doing a black album, so that white edge would stand out pretty starkly. So once we get done with that, I'm going to glue it on its frame, or its mat, and just piece that together where it uh, kind of fell apart. Working with something this then is kind of tedious and you have to be very careful that you don't uh, write on the outside which I've done plenty of times if you flip through my album there are several black squiggly marks where I accidentally uh, went right off onto the important part of the image the part you can see so I'm going to back this on a piece of that cream cardstock. And then I do all this and I don't even think I use it on this page. But I will use it on a different page and it shows you how I do some of my fussy cutting anyways. I don't use an X-Acto knife for image cutting. I use a pair of scissors. I usually use fairly large pair of scissors. I don't I I have a tiny tiny pair of scissors, but uh, I don't really know where they are. But if I sit down with a whole book to fussy cut, then I'll get those different things out. I have a magnetic uh, I, I'm not sure. It's like a magnetic cutting mat from We Are Memory Keepers. Magnetic ruler that goes on that. An X-Acto knife. And it's, it's fairly small. I think it's like a 6 by 8 size. So I like that because it's manageable. And then I have some Cutter B scissors. And which I think are my favorite and a pair of big scissors for some straight cuts. And what else do I have? I take a um, one pair of tiny scissors to do like insides of flowers and stuff like that. So that's what I use when I fussy cut. So I got this all together. And then where that fell apart you, it, it, the reason why I don't use it is because it doesn't fit on here, but where it fell apart, if I were going to 
used that, I would have put that flower over that section so you couldn't see it. So I see that it didn't fit, so I just threw it to the side. I'll use it later. And then um, I decide that this pocket I want backed in this black paper with the green bats on it, which I think is really neat. <laughs> And I'm just going to cut that just a smidge smaller than the area. Okay, and if I were thinking before, I would have matted this back before I put that pocket on there. But it was not an issue because those pockets have those, uh, those folded tabs on them. So that slid right down into the pocket it was not a problem. Now that one frame that I had didn't fit in the pockets, but this smaller cut apart from the eight by eight sheet will fit. So I just back it on a larger section of white or off white cardstock, the cream cardstock. And I'm making that as big as the pocket. It's not it's not a mat. It's it's we're gonna actually make another pocket out of that. So I'm just taking this little piece of uh, this little strip of green pattern paper that I had cut off of something else and inking the edges on that and I'm just going to put a little border to add some interest to the back of that card and I'm going to line it up with the ruler and add it to the other side also and then just snip off the excess Alright, I'm going to speed you up times three because I was getting kind of bored. <laughs> when I get bored talking, I'm just pretty sure that you guys are tired of listening. So now that that's a little bit more decorative, I take and I glue down three sides, making a pocket. And then I'm going to put a scallop border on the top of that to add some more interest. And once it's dry, I will put that little tag in it. Now, this large tag here, it measures about three and a half by seven, I think. And I'm using that deco or no the stub punch for that and then these tags are probably about three and three quarter by five and I just matted that using the same stub punch now the Stampin' Up! color that matches the green on this collection is Garden Green, I think. I don't think that's the right color. Yes, I was lying. The green that matches is Pear Pizzazz. So everything that's stamped in green matches very well and it's pear pizzazz. I have my little wrist guard on there. No worries. All is well. It'll come off here fairly soon. After a few days, it's good to go. And it's very hard. to uh, maneuver with that thing on. So I just take some cut aparts 
Here's the girl over there with the roses, and this is Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. And I just glue down the left side of the one on the, and bottom on the one on the left, and the right side and the three sides for the one on the top, leaving the middle open. So now I'm using the back of this bat paper and it's the 8x8 version for the smaller pattern and backing that side of the pocket. Another photo mat and instead of the stamp I'm going to use this um, saying from the border sheet. And then these pockets here I'm going to put this guy, who is this guy? I was trying, me and me and my daughter were trying to figure out who this guy is. Is it one of the princes? I think it's like Prince Charming, but I'm not sure. If anybody knows who this guy is, leave a leave a comment because I'm I'm thinking it's supposed to be like Prince Charming. Um, there's one in green and there's one in purple, so. Anyways, again, I just used some more some flowers, and you can tuck tuck tags under those. And this one, I'm just adding a scallop border to that little pocket that I made. Uh, I think it just adds some interest. So, and you just line it up. You snip off the edge. And do I decide? I don't think I decide anything has to go there. No, nope. I'm going to leave that alone. I think I'm going to put something there, but I don't. I probably don't put anything there because I can't get it to sit in there right. But it comes out looking all right. How long do I ponder this? Yep, there I go. I'm like, ah, forget it. Okay, so the backs of these pockets, we're going to map again with that uh, bat paper. And then add the Beauty and the Beast cut aparts from the 8x8 sheet. And again, I leave the, the sides open so you can tuck something underneath it. So it would be a really good spot to tuck a photo if you had a lot of uh, blank space in, in, on the side of the photo. I think this would be a cute album to put pictures of like Halloween costumes. So like if you went to a party and they had a lot of Halloween costumes or if you have pictures of your kids in Halloween costumes throughout the year I think that would be really cute to go along with this album mm -hmm. or maybe a play um, if one of your kids are like in school drama or something I think that uh, particular you know certain plays would go well with this collection and you can have you can fill the whole album with cast and crew. So, just my ideas. Now I'm taking I'm stub punching the mats and the tags for these pockets, and then I'm going to decorate with this border strip, ensuring that I get the whole "You Bewitch Me" in the border. And I'm going to do the same to the second tag. Huh. 
<laughs> there was two tag there were two tags stuck together, so now I have another one that's punched, but that's okay, I'll use it later. Those scissors are like the best scissors in the world. They're Martha Stewart scissors. And I've had them for a couple years and they are still really sharp. So I don't know if they make them anymore, but I really like them. And then these tags fit in there and they as they sit in there they can uh, you can still see that border so I think that's really neat okay now the opposite page I have two of the flaps glued on to the left side of the page sorry about that wiggling guys and I am going to glue another flap to the right side of the page. And this time I am not going to add a pocket to it. It's just going to be the flap. And I'm just going to use my regular ATG gun because I feel that this is it's not going to bear a lot of weight. Alrighty, so I sped it up just a little bit faster. You're on three times now. The video segmented so I'm going to put this hinge on the back of this four by six card and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a slit in this paper and slide this card in it but my slit ends up being crooked and the so the card, in order to get the card straight, the inside of it ends up being crooked and it drives me nuts. I think that if I were going to do this again, I would just forget about trying to hide that hinge and just, because it, it just doesn't, it doesn't turn out right at all. But if I had done it right, this would have been okay. You just slide your hinge in that slit and you tape it down on the inside. But since my slit was crooked, or maybe it was my fold that was crooked, which is why I like doing my albums on my Cameo. <laughs> because every time I get my scoreboard out, I make something crooked. So you can see me struggling with this. I'm like, okay, it's straight. Now watch me open it. And it's like, what is that? So I think I'm going to take some washi tape to it. Actually, I think I'm going to do that right now. Anyways, it would have just been better to see the stupid hinge. So, anyways, that big 8 by 8 piece of paper <laughs> is on there. And the 4 by 6 flap. And using that pair of pizzazz again to put these two 3 by 4 photo mats on there. I tore off a piece of washi tape to fix that, and it's not long enough. Okay, and then I used the 6x6 six six patterns and solids for that 4x8 uh, flap. And it wasn't long enough, so just like I did in the Time to Flourish album, I just used one of the borders from the 8x8 paper to hide the seam. And you can even leave that to be a tuck spot if you wanted by only gluing the sides down. But I have enough going on so I decided I didn't need to. Then I used that frame. And like I said before where it was pieced together, I just covered it with those pumpkins and the pumpkin leaves. And then on the other side of the two flaps, I'm going to take some pattern and solid green and make a pocket out of it. And I made that um, green paper the same size as those stamps. And they're about an inch and a half. So 
If you cut the green paper at an inch and a half, you can put those stamps right on it. Now, I'm piecing together. I think this is from the 12 by 12. So I'm piecing together all this pattern paper to get this pocket covered. I have a very small piece of border strip and then I'm going to finish it off by putting this piece of cream cardstock in the corner and then using this fussy cut image of Cinderella running down the steps. And that's from the 12 by 12 cut aparts. And voila, that's page two. My green page, well, one of my green pages. And now we're ready to start page three. So, page three, apparently, I already put the, <laughs> put the pockets on, so let me explain that. So, on the left side of page three there, you have two pockets that are glued directly to the right side of the page. There is no uh, flaps or anything. They're glued directly to the page. And then you have one of the two and an eighth by eight and eighth inch strips that's glued to the left side of the page to make a pocket. So that's what you're seeing on the left. Now on the right, I just glued together my big base page and I'm using the eight by eight pattern paper with the words on it and I cut off the bottom and then I'm going to use another one of those strips to make a pocket out of the bottom and this is from the sticker sheet it just says you bewitch me and there was a funny part of that flower that was flat so I wanted to be sure to get rid of that. Now, this is the easy way to put the scallop borders on the pockets, and that's to do it before you glue them down. So, if you hadn't already picked up on that, <laughs> like if you're starting from the beginning, glue the scallops on before you glue the pockets on. You just line them up, you put some tape on it, and you cut the edge off, and then you can just glue the whole pocket down on three sides. And then I can take the remainder of that pattern paper. Like I said, I love using the 8 by 8 paper pads on an 8 and an eighth inch or 8 and a quarter inch pocket because it fits so well. I'm going to put a couple more flowers on there and of course I leave the sides open so you can tuck something underneath them. You could tuck so much stuff in this book. Eventually I'm going to find a theme and put some pictures in. I did one, my Tim Holtz album has pictures in it, but uh, I think I need to put pictures in some of my Graphic 45 ones so you guys can see what they look like with pictures in them. I want to use this one, but I haven't thought, I, I don't have a bunch of pictures of my kit, of, of my daughter in Halloween costumes, and she's not in the play, so I haven't, haven't figured it out yet. So I just matted that pocket with some pattern paper and then I am going to go ahead and glue this completely down. I didn't leave any 
thing open. Uh, well, obviously I left the flaps open, but I didn't leave any where to slide anything. And I just layer that on top of there so that when you open up those flaps, you can see that cute pattern paper. And now these pockets, I'm going to use the 6x6 black stripe paper, which I really like. It's one of my favorites. And again, some more roses. Now, I, I don't know why I did this page first, but if I had done it correctly, I would have... I guess that's 8x8 paper, but I would have already had this spot covered with pattern paper, but luckily it worked out okay. So yeah, that stripe paper is from the 8x8 pattern paper. I guess I thought it was from the patterns and solids. Okay, and then just glue down the flowers. And once you stick the tags in those pockets, it makes a really nice contrast between those pockets and that paper in the background, those, the, the clusters of roses, so. And again, and that's pretty much it. I do add something. Oh, I've got to do the, I'm just taking some two by two squares. They may be one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. I'm going to put it uh, on top of each one of those little flaps to the left. And then on top of each one of those, I'm going to put another little rose cluster. And then I think, Well, I'll wait to see if I do it. I, I do do something else to the right hand side of the page. I can't remember if I do it now or if I do it later. So this voiceover is going over or going a lot faster than the master detective voiceover, so I'm pretty happy about that. I thought this would take forever, but it's not. I may have this whole complete tutorial done this weekend, and then I can finish up the mansion and put everything together and show you guys that tutorial, which is a little more in depth. I'm just putting some more flowers on those. I even make those the top and bottom little flaps tuck spots. So if you guys want me to do anything differently, please feel free to let me know. Uh, I try not to ramble too much but sometimes I think that my video you know I think my videos just not going fast enough but then if I speed it up I can't keep up so sometimes I just don't have anything else to say so I ramble <laughs> I could put some music in there if you guys would prefer that oh these little people are so cute that's from the 8x8 they, they're 8x8 pattern paper, and it's just got all those little people dancing around on it, and I did take a full sheet of that and cut it apart. Now, what's nice about this one is those the room or the blank space between the kids' hands and feet, I just left it cream, and you can't tell because the background's cream. So if I would have put it on black, you would have been able to tell. And once I glued this completely down, I've not had trouble getting it in and out of these pockets anymore, so. And 
like I said before, I'm going to fill all these pockets here later, and I do add something to that page. Uh, I must do it later. I don't know if I do it online or not, or on video. Okay, so now we're going to start page four. It's going to be my orange page. And again, I'm just gluing the two base pages together, like I showed you in the first one. I tried to show it every time, just in case you guys missed it, or in case you run into some weird problem like I have before. Like this worked the first three times I did it, why isn't it working now kind of deal. So now I'm going to take two of the 8x8 patterns, and again, I love the 8x8 paper pads. Sometimes when I'm gluing down, like right there, I'm just cringing because I'm like, oh my god, I don't believe I'm using this plainish tone-on-tone -tone orange paper instead of using these detailed border cuts that, you know, you just think of a million and one things you can do with them. So I'm really happy that this year, or maybe it was last year, they came out with the 12 by 12 patterns and solids because it really does solve a lot of the issues that I had with the uh, the pat not being able to use the patterns and solids for these bigger uh, pages. When I did my four, four by six, it was the four by six mini album, the Master Detective mini album, the 6x6 paper pad worked wonderful. But uh, this one was this one was a bit different. So on the pockets and the flaps and everything it worked great, but on the full pieces I had to use the larger pattern paper. So I just backed this cut apart with black cardstock, the same with that uh, border. And then I made it a belly band. Now I'm taking one, two, three, four, five of those flaps and I'm adding score tape to the back of them. And this is going to be my waterfall. And I'm going to use the orange chick for the waterfall. So that was a little fast, but what I did was I glued her down to the very first page. And then I flip the page up, I cut off the bottom, and I glue it down to the next one. Again, I line it up, I glue it on, I flip up the page, I cut that part off. Flip it back down, add the glue, and that is the simplest way to do a cut apart image on your waterfalls. And then I added some word stickers. So it doesn't look great when you have all of them open, but all together I think it really makes an impression by doing that to your waterfall. Now I have another little, it's it's less than a half inch hinge, it's probably like a three eighths inch hinge because I try to leave it uh, smaller because you can see it on the other side. And just left that little flap open. And then of course the black sticker there at the top is from the sticker sheet. These are little frames that I fussy cut from the 8x8 pattern paper with the pumpkins on it. Each one of them had a pumpkin inside it. So I'm just adding those for a little bit of detail. And I did only put glue on the bottom or the three corners so you can tuck something in the top if you have something small enough to do so. And then I add a little pumpkin at the bottom for some interest. And I think about putting this witch here, but she doesn't work. She will find her home on another page. 
So that's it for that page. It's my orange page. And we are about to start on the last page. And it's going to go super fast because I don't have to put the page together with you. It's the very same as the first page. So, the, the left side is extremely simple and this is another one of those places where I cringe because I glued this paper down. <laughs> but I really like the other side too. And this is is the one I was talking about it's the same as the first page so I show you it's that page so essentially it's got three flaps at the top and a pocket at the bottom with the three or triple flap so again I'm using this paper to back the triple flap and I put it on crooked but I can't take it back up so I just Put it back down and you really can't tell once this piece is on there anyways so um, gluing just the bottom three sides or just the bottom and the sides leaving the top open and I got a sticker from the sticker sheet and I had removed the stickiness on it so I just added some ATG tape and then I'm going to put some more flowers on either side Of those little pockets oh this one's neat because this one has this little ghost lady so I'm putting this beware and then this ghost lady who's halfway cut off is gonna get tucked behind there and then I'm gonna use these little tiny flowers to kind of cover up all the jagged edges and just kind of make it look more cohesive not like a big chunk of you know wording that I cut out haphazardly like I did so again with the pocket um, I was about to say I have no idea why I did that before I uh, put that strip on there but I caught myself there's the strip there's the rest of the pocket and you can actually see a tiny bit of that white border but it doesn't bother me it almost separates the pocket from the rest of it better so again like I, I like the top and bottom pockets to match I'm going to use a full piece of pattern paper, or not a full piece, but I'm going to totally map this pocket, or this flap. I'm also going to totally map that flap with the opposite side of that paper. And then I'm going to make a belly band out of this 8x8 rose paper. And use one of the tickets for a stopper. I'm going to mat that on some cream cardstock first to give it a little bit more volume and I'm going to follow the ticket stub corners too okay, so now whatever we tuck in there is going to have a place to rest and I moved it it's up so far so you don't see it when those other two flaps close I'm going to take this postcard glue down two sides and this frame from one of the cut aparts again glue down three sides of that and there's a chunk out of that frame 
from one, I, I don't remember if I, I scribbled on it when I was trying to outline it. So I'm going to put one of the small stamps on there to cover that up. So that one's done. Uh, this one, I have this scrap of the black line paper. And I'm going to make a tuck spot out of it, and I'm going to put the Hansel and Gretel uh, fussy cut on it, which is one I haven't used yet, so. And then I have this spinning wheel from the 12 by 12, I think, signature sheet. And I just left the side open so I can tuck something in there. And then this one, I, I'm, I'm not going to use it now. I'll, I'll put it on there later. But what is that? The witch with the tree? Somebody let me know. Um, I have a whole book of old Grimm's fairy tales, and I don't recall that one. So I just use that white and black 6x6 bat paper and one of these tags to decorate that bottom page. So I stick that in there. I'm going to stick that over there and I'm going to add that Hansel and Gretel cut apart there that I fussy cut. And I'm just going to stick it to, not to the back, but to the actual pocket. And then I'm going to stick that booklet of unknown thing in there. Or not. Alright, so this is the last one. And I'm just going to add this giant flower to the bottom left hand corner or cluster of flowers and then you can use that as a tuck spot. Okay, it looks like there was um an odd space in the kind of a I, I guess they call it a captured space or something over there to the left so I just added some greenery to it I think that's actually from the uh, Jack and the Beanstalk so part two of this tutorial is coming to an end I want to appreciate everybody for watching if you have any questions comments or concerns please leave them below or you can give me an email. I thank you very much and bye-bye.